Welcome to this brief video about asthma phenotypes. My name is John Blakey and I'm a consultant respiratory physician at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital in Perth. In the course of this short video, we'll be asking what we mean by asthma phenotypes, discussing why it's important to know what somebody's phenotype might be, and we'll talk a little about how we might match treatment to common phenotypes. The first of those questions is, what is an asthma phenotype? Well, before we get on to answering that question, let's talk a little bit more about what we mean by asthma. Asthma is very common in Australia, affecting about one in nine people. That's 2.7 million of us. So the chances are that if you're watching this video, you either have asthma or you know people who do. You'll also be aware that although they have common shared features, such as cough and breathlessness, they don't all have the same experience. Some people's asthma comes on at a very early age, whereas others have the onset when they're older children, as young adults, or even in older age. Whatever age it starts, asthma can sometimes be mild, causing very little trouble. Or it can be interrupting people's daily lives with intrusive symptoms and limitations. And for some people, it means frequent trips to the hospital. People with asthma have different responses to medications, in the sense that some don't respond well at all to certain medicines, and others may only have a partial response. People are often aware of what sets their asthma off, and that will vary from person to person. A particular example of this is people who have occupational asthma. That's asthma either caused or greatly aggravated by their professional exposures. The three core aspects of asthma are producing too much mucus, narrowing of the air tubes, or the airways becoming inflamed. But across people with asthma as a population, we see great variation in how much mucus people produce, how much wheeziness or airway narrowing they get, and how much inflammation there is in the air tubes and of what type. Although saying somebody has asthma is a useful way of introducing the general type of problem they have, it isn't enough to describe exactly what's wrong with them. If we want to have meaningful discussions between people with asthma and healthcare professionals and between the healthcare professionals involved in their care, we need to be more specific. And here's where phenotypes come in. An asthma phenotype is a combination of observed or measured characteristics that usually fall into a recognisable pattern. For example, many people with asthma have it from an early age and they have allergies they've identified themselves and that we can demonstrate with things like skin prick tests. The more inflammation people have in their lungs, the worse that their symptoms get. There's good correlation between them. Other people might have a later onset of asthma. They might have more in the way of inflammation in the air tubes, so relatively few symptoms on a day-to-day -day basis but more in the way of asthma attacks that land them up at the GP surgery or in hospital for some steroid rescue treatment. So we recognise that asthma is an umbrella term and that there are patterns of disease that we can see quite commonly. So why do we need to recognise these patterns? Why it's important to know somebody's phenotype. There are a number of things that are a fit for everybody. Interventions that will help people get control of their asthma, maintain good health and enjoy their quality of life. These are things you might expect, like stopping smoking or assisting others to do so and stay away from passive smoke from other people maintaining a healthy weight, keeping active, and taking their inhaled medicines as prescribed in terms of when they're taken and with a good inhaler technique. 
Now these one size fits all approaches. An important point is that these one size fits all approaches coupled with regular inhaled preventative treatment usually works well and for most people this is sufficient to get their asthma under control and allow them to have a good quality of life without intrusive symptoms and without flare-ups happening frequently. A minority of people have more severe disease and this standard inhaled treatment isn't sufficient to get their disease under control. They will need to go on and be assessed for specialist treatment. To understand more about somebody's asthma, specialist centres will often employ a systematic team-based approach. This involves speaking to different healthcare professionals and going on to have breathing and blood tests, a scan and often other investigations such as sputum samples, oscillometry or skin prick testing. Often these results will fit together into a common phenotype. For example, in the case we discussed earlier, somebody with early onset asthma and other allergic diseases like eczema and hay fever usually has a high level of immunoglobulin E in their bloodstream, a high level of exhaled nitric oxide, a measure of airway inflammation, and lung function that shows some airway narrowing that gets better with a common reliever drug like sarbutamol. This type of asthma can respond well to specialist medicines that suppress the pathways that are involved in allergic asthma, such as omalizumab and dupilumab. Sometimes the pattern we see is less typical. However, we may see a specific characteristic that's measurable and treatable. For example, we mentioned before high levels of eosinophils causing inflammation in the airways. We can detect this with a simple blood test. People who have high levels of eosinophils in the blood are more likely to have asthma attacks are more likely to have lung function that gets worse over time. Reducing the level of eosinophils in the blood and the lung with drugs like mepolizumab and benralizumab means that people have fewer asthma attacks and a reduced need for tablet steroids and all of the side effects that those things can cause. You might hear of these specific characteristics being described as treatable traits. We don't have as many tools for people who don't have this pattern of asthma. This includes people that have more in the way of infections and mucus production. However, things are changing. More treatment options will be available soon. There are treatment options in development and some that are very close to being registered for use. For example, tezapelumab is another antibody drug. It targets a messenger called T-slip that's involved in several types of asthma and can have benefits across a range of different phenotypes. In summary, we've talked about the variation that we see in asthma, not only between people, but over time within the same person. We can think of asthma about phenotypes, clusters of characteristics that hang together and help us make a good decision on matching the right treatment to the right person. Sometimes we might see a specific characteristic which we know that we can address and it will be a benefit that we call a treatable trait. A key message from this short presentation should be that if your asthma isn't under excellent control using a regular preventer inhaler, please do discuss the options with your doctor you may well have a characteristic or phenotype that can be treated by one of these newer medicines. Please bear in mind this is a large, complicated and particularly quickly evolving topic. You probably do have some questions. 
please do think about talking to an Asthma Australia advisor or your asthma specialist for more information.